Amen. You know, I asked someone who, who attends the feast, I asked him, why do you keep on attending the feast? Ang sagot niya sa akin, because the feast reminds me that I have more blessings than problems. Do you agree? Yes. Amen. And if you have problems, I still believe in this for serving God for almost 30 years. I, I just realized that those problems are actually not problems. They are blessings. Do you agree? Yung iba, parang hindi pa, hindi pa ako naniniwala dyan. It's okay. Ako din eh. Yung bago ako talaga hindi. Pag problema, problema. That is why Mother Teresa, si Mother Teresa, every time she goes to a convent, yung kanyang congregation, yung mga sisters, yung mga superior, lumalapit sa kanya, sinasabi, Mother, we have a lot of problems. Sabi ni Mother Teresa, Oh, those are not problems. They are gifts from God. You don't say God. Kaya if next time when I come here, you have problems. Don't tell me you have problems. You tell me we have gifts. So ngayon pinalitan nila lahat. Pag darating si Mother Teresa, yung mga madre, sister, Mother Teresa, we have a lot of gifts. <laughs> because I believe it, that that problems are blessings in disguise. Why? Because problems or crisis. Can you say crisis? Crisis, crisis shapes your character. It shapes your character. Question, how many of you have had a crisis in your life? So, lahat naman, kahit bata pa, ako din, ako din, sabi ng mga bata, oh, you had a crisis. Do you remember some of you? You almost lost a job. Do you remember that time? You talaga, Lord, wala na akong trabaho. But now, you have a good job. And God has blessed you with that. Ngayon, inaalagaan mo yung trabaho mo. Bakit? Kasi may nangyari sa akin noon, di maganda. Noong nandun ako sa dating ano ko, inaaway ko palagi boss ko. Natanggal ako ngayon. Hindi ko na inaaway ang boss ko. Kahit mas maraming sungay siya kaysa sa dati. That crisis shaped your life. Yung iba sa inyo, you were sick before. Yung talagang feeling mo, mamamatay na ako. Di ba? Tinubuhan ka na kamay sa likod, tapos kaya wala na yung kamay sa likod. You are healed already. You are here and you are well. Amen? That crisis shaped your life. What else? Ah, siguro yung iba sa inyo, you were broken hearted. Tama ba? Tingnan nyo yung katabi nyo, baka siya yung pinag-uusapan natin. No? Broken hearted. Siya ba ang pinag-uusapan natin? Naalala mo, when you were broken hearted, anong sabi mo, hindi ka makatulog, umiiyak-iyak ka. Diba? Tapos ngayon, you are over him. Okay ka na. You survive. Tapos sinasay mo, thank you Lord! Buti na lang, hindi kami nagkatuluyan ng kambing na yan. <laughs> crisis shape your life. If you really think about it, every crisis you went through shaped who you are, shaped your character. You are now better, stronger, and wiser. Yes? Sabi nyo nga, I am better. I am stronger. I am wiser. Sabi nyo nga sa mga katabi nyo yan, kaibigan nyo naman siya, sabi mo sa kanya, you are better. You are stronger. You are wiser. Amen? Let's come before our God who makes us better, stronger, and wiser. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray our favorite prayer here at the feast. Together, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word. So I would become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light. 
unto my heart. Let's read from Romans chapter 5. Can we read together? We can rejoice when we run into problems. Sabihin niyo sa katabi niyo yan. We can rejoice. Yes, we can rejoice when we run. But, just to be honest, I don't exactly rejoice when I am in trouble. When I am in... Pag may problema ako, hindi naman ako... Hindi ako weird, mga kapatid. Pareho lang tayo, umiiyak din ako. Kahapon may nakausap ako, sinabi niya sa akin, alam mo yun, nagka-problema ako, samaan ang loob ko na, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Ikaw, pag nagka-problema ako, paano naramdaman mo? Sabi ko, pareho lang tayo. Nagulat siya sa akin. Bakit? Sa loob-loob niya. But, nalulungkot din ako. I, I don't say, yes. Oh, saya ko. Bakit? May sakit mga anak ko. Yes. Lumalakas ang immune system nila. <laughs> nalulungkot din ako. I am troubled as well. I don't say, yay! Woo! Naaksidente ako eh. I, I don't do that. Yung iba, nadapa. Ang cute. <laughs> huh? I don't do that. Pag nadapa ako, nasasaktan ako, napapahiya ako. I don't actually rejoice. Nasusunog bahay ko. Alam ka na bang nasusunog na? Kumakanta pa ako eh. Let the fire fall. Let, hindi. Nako, iiyak ako niyan. But why is God telling us Rejoice when you run into problems. He isn't telling you to rejoice because of the problem. God is telling you to rejoice because of the purpose of the problem. Can you say purpose? May yung mag- magdiwang ka sa dahilan ng problema mo yan. Magdiwang ka sa dahilan ng hirap na yan. Bakit? Because there is a purpose for your trial. There is a purpose for your crisis. I believe problems have many purposes. And I believe that one of the greatest purposes of problems is to shape our character. Let's read continually. Romans 5. They help us learn to be patient. And patience develops strength of character in us and helps us until... Those are characters. Ano yan? You trust. There is hope. There is faith that is steady and strong. You know, I've come to a very big and disturbing realization for serving God for many, many years. This is big. Are you ready? This is disturbing. Are you ready? Are you sure? Feeling ko lang, ha? sana hindi na pagkatapos ko sabihin itong statement na to, bumalik pa rin kayo next week. Ar- sigurado kayo? Tingnan nyo nga ang katabi nyo. Sabihin nyo nga sa kanya, balik pa rin tayo, ha? Because this is very disturbing. This is what I've come to realize. I've come to realize that God, the one I serve, values my character more than my comfort. Sabihin nyo nga, comfort. He values your character more than your comfort. I wish it was not like that. I wish His priority was my comfort. I wish that His first priority was to solve my problems and just to bless me. But no. But don't get me wrong. He cares for you so much. Ay, pag umiiyak ka, nandiyan ang Diyos. He wants you to get well. He, he wants to bless you. Am I clear? But that is not His first priority. Before He gives you comfort, He makes sure that you are right in your character. Why? Tingnan nyo nga yung katabi nyo. Tanong mo nga sa Kanya, Do you know why? Alam ba niya? Hindi. Hindi, no? I give you two reasons. First is this, that God values your character more than your comfort. First reason is this, because when you die, you will leave behind your cars, you will leave behind your career, you will leave behind your clothes, your cash, you will leave behind your comfort. And the only thing you will bring in heaven is your character. That is why God's priority is what? 
unahin ko yung iuuwi mo dito. Kasi iwan mo naman lahat yan. Iiwan mo. Kaya ako naniniwala, mas mahalaga ka kaysa sa pinapagdasal mo. Lord, bigyan niyo ako ng takataas pa yung na to God's love mo. Bigyan niyo ako ng kotse. Pero si Lord ang tinitingnan, ikaw, bago kita bigyan ng kotse, ayusin muna kita kasi baka pag nagkakotse ka, mayabang ka. Ang inihingi mo pang kotse, masyadong magara. Pareho na kay Brother Aaron. Sobra. No? Yung, do you get what I'm saying? May tinatas kang panalangin, Lord, dali niyo ako sa abroad. Gusto ko mamasyan. Pero bago ko ita ipasyan, tingnan ko muna yung character mo. Bakit? You will leave behind everything. You will leave behind your comfort. But you will bring in heaven your character. That is why He wants to bless you. Yes, He wants to solve your problems. But before that, He wants to shape your character. God values your character more than your comfort. It is so shocking. Second reason is this. Because your God is a parent. He is a daddy. He, he is also a character of a mommy. And as a father, me as a father, I want my kids, I want Helene to be pretty. I want Johan to be handsome. May mga nag-Facebook sa akin itong week na to. Kasi third session, si Johan, kinarga ko eh. Nagpakarga sa akin sa harap, nagpipray kami. Sabi ng mga nag-Facebook, ang gwapo ng anak mo. Ako naman, sabi ko, given na yan. Bakit? Nasa dugo yan. Malakas ang dugo ng asawa ko. But I want my kids to be healthy. Who are parents here? Can I see the hands of parents? Do you want your kids to be healthy? Do you want your kids to be wealthy? I want that as well. I want my kids to be healthy, wealthy, but more than healthy and wealthy, I want them to be godly. Why? Huh, because if they are not godly, they won't be happy. They will not be happy. Same thing with God. God wants the best for us. God wants the best for you. Amen? But before He wants you to be successful in your physical life, He wants you to be successful in your spiritual life. Before He wants you to be successful in your body, He wants you to be successful in your soul. Crisis shapes character. Put your hands upon your heart. Let us come before our God who loves us so much. Close your eyes, bow down your head. Pray this prayer after me. Father in heaven, hold my hand, hold my heart. Do a miracle. Perform a miracle. I want your words to give me hope, to give me strength, to guide me, to lift me up. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Speak to your people today as always, oh God. As you sit down, tell someone next to you, God is blessing you right now. Talk number three of the series, Bounce. Bounce forward. Can you say, Bounce forward? Can you tell your friend beside you, Let's bounce forward? Three things, my dear friends, that the crisis does to your character. First, a crisis diagnoses your character. It diagnoses your character. What is a character? Character is how you behave when life is very far from your imagination. Cry character is how you behave when everything is totally going wrong. Hindi yan yung... Kasi yung character, lumalabas yan pag, ano, pag may crisis na. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, mabait siya. Tingnan mo ang bait-bait niya. Oh, pero pag inaway mo yan, parang incredible Hulk yan. Di ba? Magagalit yan sa'yo. O kaya yung mister, I am very, very faithful to my wife. Talaga, faithful ka sa asawa mo kasi walang nang sa sa'yo. Hmm, kasi pangit ka. Huh? Wala. 
Wala eh. eh. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin faithful ka kung ano. Wala namang, walang temptation around. Crisis diagnoses your character. Let me give you an analogy. Crisis or your character is like a tea bag. Ito ang aking magic box. Ang character daw ay parang tea bag. Ano yung tea bag? Hindi to medyas to. No? Wala, wala, wala. Hindi yan. A tea bag. Ayan. Ito. Ano yung tsaa? Hindi mo malalaman kung masarap to pag kahit amoy mo lang. Kasi halos lahat pare-pareho ang amoy. Kailan malalaman na masarap ang tsaang ito? Pag, if you dunk it in hot water, then you will know that this tea bag is really a nice tea bag, a delicious one. Pag pinasok mo na saan? Sa mainit na tubig. Your character will come out if your character is dunk in hot water. How many of you feel that you are in hot water today? Who? How many? Talagang nandun ako sa crisis ng buhay ko ngayon. Sino may crisis sa inyo? Thank you. Then your character will be exposed. Sa opisina, talagang you are challenged. Itong mga kasama mo sa opisina, pinag-iisahan ka. Ay, dyan lalabas ang character mo. Pwede kang maging tibag na ano, napakasarap. Ganda ng karakter mo. O, isa kang medyas na pwede rin naman parang tibag. <laughs> Di ba? Na ano, walang kwenta. Your character will be diagnosed through your crisis. And my prayer for you is that you come out with a godly character. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 3 says, When you have many kinds of troubles, you should be full of full of joy. Because you know that these troubles test your faith and this will give you patience. Second thing that the trial will do to your character, a crisis. A crisis develops your character. Sabi nyo nga, develops. Naalala ko yung pamangking ko. Nasa ka na, Epoy? Ayan, yung pamangking ko si Jeff. Yan lang ang isa kong pamangkin. Dalawa lang kayong magkapatid. Isa lang anak niya. So si Epoy, two-year-old pa lang siya noon. Sabi niya sa akin, ano, milk, milk, umihingi ng gatas. Gatas, gatas, ganyan, ganyan. Ang gatas noon, ewan ko, nag-iba kami ngayon eh. Ang gatas noon, sa mainit na tubig, tawa, eh, tawa ko eh, mainit na tubig. Tapos maghihintay yung bata kasi mainit pa. Tapos ibababad ko sa tab- tabo. Ngayon, tap water na lang eh. Yun ang ginagawa ko sa anak ko. Pero kay, kay Epoy, ilalagay ko talaga. Tapos siya, iyak ng iyak. Mek! Mek! Ganun ang ganun. Sabi ko, you wait. Maghintay ka ha? Mek! Mek! Sabi ko, mainit. Mainit. Mek! Ang gulo. Mek! Ihingay, di ba? Mek! Gusto kong kunin yung medyas ko. Tipasok sa bibig eh, no? Pero ang ihingay talaga. Mek! Ang kulit. Kinuha ko. Tapos, oh, ayan. Oh, sige. Pagpasok niya, alam, napaso. Pag, ingit, ingit, ingit. Alam mo, since then, this is what I've realized. Isipin mo ito, eh, boy, ah. Pag ganun niya, pag labas niya, napaso siya talaga. In it, in it, in it. Simula noong napansin ko sa batang ito, pag sinabi natin namin, maghintay ka, naghihintay. Naghihintay na siya. Maghintay ka lang. Opo. Hanggang lumaki. Bakit? Problems burn, my, my brothers and sisters. A crisis burns. It burns for a reason. It, bur- it teaches you a lesson that you will never forget for the rest of your life. And that is what happened to, to Jeff, to Epoy. Mek, mek, nung, nung binigay ko talaga, pag ganyan niya, ay niya, ay niya, ay niya. Simula nun, lahat na sabihin namin, maghintay ka, naghihintay na. Lalo na pag ako. Pag sinabi ko, maghintay ka, naghihintay. Because that is what a crisis will do to you. And this is what I've realized. You have to listen to me. This is very powerful. Tests are repeated until the lesson is learned. Umuulit yan hanggat di mo nagigets. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, hanggat di mo magets. Ito yun. Tests are repeated until the lesson is learned. So this is what I would like you to do. I would like you to look at your life and see 
If you are undergoing a trial right now, and look at your trial, if it looks familiar, parang, parang nangyari na sa akin to, ah. You have to ask yourself a question. Why did this trial reappear? Bakit bumalik? Oh, malaking possibility you haven't learned your lesson yet. Hindi mo pa rin nakuha. May student ako sa Binil. Every term, naging kaibigan ko na yung student eh. Every term, class record, uh, class giving day. Magkikita kami niyan. Tapos natanungin ko sa kanya, oh, kumusta ka? Sir, baksak na naman. Hmm, baksak ka na naman. Ilang baksak mo ngayon? Five subjects. Five subjects? Ilan na subject mo? Seven. Talaga? Next term, magkikita kami. Oh, kumusta ka na? Sir, baksak na naman. Oh, ilan? Four. Oh, four. Apat. Ganyan. Bakit? Ganyan. Ilan subject mo? Six. Ganyan. After ilang terms, nagkita kami ulit. Oh, kumusta ka na? Sir, ito ulit. Baksak na naman. Every term, baksak. O ilang baksak mo ngayon? Dalawa, sir. Uy! At least dalawa. Ilang kinuha mo subject? Tatlo. <laughs> Hindi natututo. Bakit? Paulit-ulit yung lesson. May isang babae, ang ganda-ganda, broken-hearted palagi. Bakit? Kasi lahat ng boyfriends niya, member ng Jerks of the United Society of the World, mga jerks. Alam mo yun, yung walang, walang kwenta ang boyfriend. Bakit yan na naman? Walang kwenta yan. Pagkatapos si Sakta, nahanap na naman ng walang kwenta. Hindi natututo. Bumabalik. If you don't get the lesson, the test will be repeated. It will come back. Sikuhin nyo nga yung katabi niyo. Sabihin nyo nga sa kanya, get the lesson. Get the lesson. You know, I have a formula for trial. This is my formula for trial. Gusto kong ituro sa inyo. Dahil mahal ko naman kayo, I would like you to go to trial as fast as you can. Okay? Pinakamabilis na pwede niyong gawin sa trial. Kasi may trial, may crisis. Because that crisis wants to shape you. You have to undergo that as fast as you can. And this is my formula. How, question, how many of you would like to know how to make your trial as short as possible. Sige nga. Okay. Tuturo ko sa inyo ang aking formula. This is my formula. To get the teaching of that trial, you have to get that without the trial. You, you got it? Get the teaching of that trial without undergoing the trial. Hindi ka nadadaan. Paano yan? Learn from others. Si Epo, yung pamangking ko, may pinsan yan. Nung nalaman niya na napaso sa gatas si Epo, kasi nagmamadali, alam mo yung pinsan na yan? Hindi na hihingi yan, hindi na magmamadali. Natuto siya kadino sa pinsan niya. Napaso. Kaya ako, pag may hiningi ako at sinabi sa akin, wag, hindi ako muna. Mamaya na lang. So this is what you do. When people come to you and They, they will tell you their story. Listen to them. And then ask them, how did that happen? Paano nangyari yan? Bakit ganito na? And then learn from what they're telling you. And then you skip that trial. You learn from the trials of others. That's my formula. Para ano, hindi ko nadaanan tong problema na to, matututo na lang ako dito sa mga kinakounsel ko. May lalapit sa akin. Brother, gulo-gulo buhay ko. Bakit? Sinang babae ako eh. Alam mo, dating sa akin, no? hindi ako mambababae. Bakit? Ginugulo na buhay ko. Ginulo nga buhay niya. Ba't ako mambababae? Do you get what I'm saying? It's the same with you. Makinig kayo, tingnan niyo yung mga kapitbahay niyo. Bakit narimata yung bahay nila? Ay, kasi hindi sila yun. I will learn from them. Hindi ko gagawin yun. Pero huwag nyo na ipagkalat. No, huy, baksak sila, no? Hindi, iyon na lang. But learn from them. Scripture says in Proverbs, sometimes it takes a painful situation to make us change our ways. Third thing that a crisis will do to your character is this. A crisis defends your character. Sabihin nyo nga, defends. Sabihin nyo nga sa katabi nyo, defends. This is important. 
A crisis humbles you. A crisis brings you closer to God. When life is smooth, maganda ang buhay, you know what happens to you? You become very proud and sometimes you shy away from God. Pero pag dumating ang crisis, hindi mo, nasaan ka? Nakaluhod sa harap ng Diyos. Kaya it defends you. Bakit? It brings you closer to your God. I would like you to do an experiment. Kaya nyo kaya ito? Sabihin nyo na lang sa akin, kaya ko. Ayan. Madugo ng konti ha. Mabasa itong experiment na to. Ipasok ka natin yung props ko dyan. Itong una kong phase one, this is what I would like you to do. <clears throat> phase one is, I would like you, doon sa bahay ninyo, ito ang gawin nyo, doon sa mga blankong lugar, lalo na pag umulan na, pag umulan na, itong gusto kong gawin nyo, manghuli kayo ng isang palaka. Palaka, ha? Manghuli kayo ng palaka. Bahala na kahit saan, basta makahuli kayo ng palaka. Tapos, ang gawin nyo, pag may palaka na kayo, magpainit kayo ng tubig. Dapat kumukulong tubig. Ha? Pakuluan nyo yung tubig. Kumukulo na. Pag kumukulo na, step three, itapon nyo yung palaka sa loob. Magugulat nga lang kayo kasi yung palaka, pag tinapon nyo, anong gagawin niya? Tatalon yan. Tatalo niya, matutroma ito. Tapos pag nakuha niyo, eh, kailangan, eh, alaga, eh, kasi kailangan siya mag-psychotherapy para mawala yung kanyang lungkot sa buhay na ginawa mo. Ha? Yun ang phase one of the experiment. Okay? Kuha ka ng palaka, pain, pakulo ka ng tubig, tapos itapon mo. Pag tapo, tatalo niyan. Tapos i-therapy mo to. Ha? Ito ang phase two. Are you ready for phase two? Yes? Phase two is this. Kunin mo rin siya ulit. Kunin mo siya. Kaya lang, ang gawin mo ganito, yung tubig, huwag mong pakuluan. Maglagay ka lang ng tap water. Step two, put tap water here. Dito sa pot na ito. Tapos itong palaka, kahit papano, magaling-galing na siya konti. Ilagay mo ngayon siya dyan, sa may tap water. Ayan na. Magugulat ka. You will notice this. Alam niyo ginagawa ng palaka? Lumalangoy. Ayan, lalangoy-langoy yan. Grabe, magbabackstroke, ganyan. No? Sisisid yan. No? Magugulat ka, parang ang galing lumangoy. Mga kahit nag-aral sa Bert Losada Swimming Pool yan, swimming school. Diba? Si Bert, si, si Anthony, fish attendee ng alabang yan. Ayan, natuto yan kay Bert Losada. Ang galing-galing, oh. Ganyan. Tapos habang lumalangoy-langoy siya, buksan mo to. Tapos dahan-dahan mo siyang ilipat dito. No? Yan. Tapos, ilagay mo lang tong burner mo, medium. Medium lang, wag todo. konti lang. Magugulat ka. Habang umiinit ito, magugulat ka sa kanya. Nag-freestyle. Freestyle. Luwalangoy pa rin. Hindi tumatalon. Luwalangoy pa rin. Tapos, dahil nag-freestyle siya, may maririnig ka sa kanya. Parang kumakanta. Kakit ngayon ka lang dumating sa buhay ko. Eh, freestyle song din yun eh, no? Kaya, baka, grabe ito, ano? Tapos mamaya, habang umiinit na, lumalabas na yung uso, mapapansin nyo, parang inaantok na siya. Hindi na siya masyadong lumalangoy. Maya-maya, you will realize, itong palakang ito, hindi na niya kailangan ng psychotherapy. Bakit? Patay na siya. Naluto na. That's phase two. Phase 3, ganyan pa rin. Kuha ka lang ng carrots, mga gulay, tapos lagay mo. Uh, may pag-aing ka na mamaya, ano? But you get what I'm saying? Crisis is this. Crisis is you being dropped in the boiling water. Ang crisis ganyan, itinapong ka sa kumukulong tubig. Pero pag tapon sa'yo, anong ginawa mo? Shoom! Talong ka kagad. Bakit? Because that is what a crisis will do to your life. It will wake you up. Crisis will do that. It wakes you up. Kaya it defends your character. Pag may dumating dyan, lalabas yan. Yun ang trabaho ng crisis. Hindi pwedeng nandiyan ka tapos ang crisis mo, wala naman. Ako mamamatay. Kaya crisis will 
defend you. You get it? Crisis will shape your character. I would like to end with a story. Can I ask you to stand up? I would like to end with this. This is a story about a mother and a boy. Itong mother and a boy, they went to a farm. Ito sila sa farm. Tapos while on the farm, the boy said, Mom, I'm going to swim dito sa river, sa swamp. Oh sure, just take care, okay? Tapos nakikita naman niya anak niya. So lalangoy-langoy yung bata, langoy-langoy. Tapos maya-maya konti, yung mami nang laki yung mata kasi malayo-layo siya konti. Takbo yung mami sa anak. Bakit? Nakita niya, there was an alligator rushing through to her boy. Alligator. Sigaw siya, anak! Lumabas ka dyan! May buaya! Yung bata, tumaligot. Nakita niya, palapit sa kanya. Yung bata, langoy, takbo. Nung malapit na, makapunta talaga sa land, sa safety. Alam niyo, yung alligator, kinagat yung kanyang paa. Baksak yung bata. Pagbaksak ng bata, hihilain na nung alligator papuntang tubig yung bata. The mommy arrived. And you know, the mommy held on to the arms of the boy. And there was a tug of war. Hihilaan sila. Tug of war. Grabe, alam nyo, the, the, the alligator was so, so strong. But the mommy, <laughs> her love won't let go. Hindi siya papaya. Hawak siya talaga. Labanan sila doon. Mga ilang minuto naglalabanan yung bata. Iyak na, iyak na. Halos mahimahi, matay na sa sakit. And then, a man driving a truck saw what ha- what's happening, went down with a rifle, shot the alligator. And the boy was saved. And the boy went to the hospital. After weeks of recuperating, there was a journalist who went to that boy just to interview him. And the journalist, after asking a few questions, said, can, can, we, can we take a photo of your wounds? And the boy said, which ones? Because I have two wounds. So sabi nung photographer, ah, what do you mean? Kasi in-expect niya yung kagat, di ba? Tapos yung bata, inalis yung blanket, pinakita sa kanya, this is the wound from the alligator. These are the scars from the alligator's teeth. Pinakita? Tapos mamaya, sabi nung boy, but my other wounds, that's what I'm proud of. And he exposed his arms and showed off the ugly scars. And the reporter said, ah, di ba kinagat ka sa pa, ah? Where did you get those scars on your arms? The boy smiled and said, My mother's fingernails that dug deep into my skin. Ito yung kapit ng nanay ko. Ito yung sugat ng kapit ng nanay ko sa akin. Because my mother would not let me go. And these are the scars I am proud of. Because they are scars of love. You have scars in your life, my dear friends. Those are scars of God's love. Those are scars. God did not allow you to what? To get that job. Why? <laughs> because it will drive you away from your family. He knows. He knows. God did not allow you to close that deal. Why? Because He knows you will be surrounded by bad, bad friends. Bad company. God didn't allow you to have that boyfriend. Why? Because God knows that man is an alligator. He knows. He pulled you away because He loves you so much. Amen? Amen? He didn't allow your enemy to pull you away. 
right now you have scars in you that hurt so deep but you're alive you are alive you are closer to God your character is shaped I would like you to thank God for that amen amen my dear friends nothing will keep you away from him nothing hindi siya papayag mawalay ka sa kanyang piling nothing my friend will keep you away from your God. No walls are strong enough to keep me from your side. No sea is wide enough to keep me far away from you. And I will climb the highest mountain if that is all it takes. I live to worship you. I live to worship you. Can you lift your hands like this to God? He is holding your arms right now. Because He will not let go. He will not let you go. Because He loves you so much. You have scars, yes. But those scars are scars of love. Just hold on to your God. He desires what is best for you. And as you hold on to your God, I would like you to pray this prayer. Father in heaven, I surrender my life to you I have gone through problems I have scars in my life the scars tell me that you didn't let go of me because the enemy is going to swallow me up if it could have been so much worse but you held on to me I am here in front of you to say thank you for not letting go. Oh, yes. 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 And I will not let go as well, oh God. I will hold on to you. I will. I will. Oh, Jesus. Sing with me. This song. No walls are strong enough to keep me from your side. No sea is wide enough to keep me far away from you. And I will climb the highest mountain if that is all that it takes. I will to worship you. Worship the Lord. Worship Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, you are my hiding place. Lord, you are my safe refuge. In every heartache and in every pain, in my life. Your love will reign and now forever live in your embrace. Lord, I am forever yours. In my heart, all I desire. Every breath from me will worship you. My heart So we'll find rest in you alone. No walls are strong enough to keep me from your side. No sea is wide enough to keep me far away from you. I will climb the highest mountain if that is all it takes. I live to burn. 
God and your prayers. If you don't have your novena, just lift up your hands like this up in the air and let me pray for you. Father in heaven, I pray, I believe that you would like to bless me. And I also believe that your priority is my character. If these dreams, these prayers will not bring me closer to you, don't say yes to them, oh God. Mas nauunawaan niyo, Panginoon. Mas alam niyo ang mabuti sa akin. But I still lift them up to you. And I believe, O God, that your version of my dreams, they are better than mine. And so I pray that your version will be fulfilled. I claim this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. From the crisis, God shapes us and brings out our character. Let's not bounce backward. In crisis, let us bounce forward. 
Yung mga katabi nyo, may krisis sa buhay yan. Dumaan yan sa krisis sa hirap ng buhay. Nasa mainit na tubig yan ngayon. Sabihin nyo nga sa kanya, with comfort. Comfort them, give them an embrace, hug them, shake their hands, tell them, you will bounce forward. <laughs>